Good evening. My name is Ben Hikes. We're here at the Jesus is Lord Ministries International, just outside of Gettysburg on Route 30. Wednesday evening. The title of my message is Walk in the Spirit. I'm going to be reading from Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. That's my main, my main verse. But then I'm going to start at verse 16 and read on through. But verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Let's go to word of prayer. Our Father and our God, as we come before you this evening, we give you thanks for another day you've given us. We just pray that you'd be with us, be with me, send your Holy Spirit to lead and guide me, and speak the words that you would have me speak. I begin the preaching of your word. May your word not return void, but may it accomplish what you have sent it forth to do. We ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. So Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Uh, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The one word that Paul was talking about is the word love. And it's the I believe this would be the agape love because there's different kinds of love. There's phileo, which is the, the brotherly love, and agape, which is God's love, and arios, I believe it's called, which is the, uh, the love <coughs> Uh, between a man and a woman. So, and there's other, there's other types, but they're the main ones. But he said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you not consume one of another. So that's that's the opposite of of love. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts us after the spirit and a spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if you are led by the Spirit, led of the Spirit, ye shall not under... But if you... Be led by the Spirit. You are not under the law. Now, the uh, New International
Krishna version has a, a uh, well, it has a different translation, different words, but I think it <coughs> I like to look at it. And starting at verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour one, if you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. And this could be talking about uh, people in relationships, like uh, husband and wife, but it also could be talking about uh, people in in other relationships, you know, like family or the work environment, or even even in the church. So we don't want to bite and devour one one another, because by doing that. We will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. So, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not, you are not under the law. Say if we walk by the Spirit, we're gonna we're gonna crucify this flesh. We're gonna not walk, not do the things that we desire, but <clears throat> but the things that the, that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, leads and guides us in the path that we should go. And so. We're not going to want to do the desires, the will of the flesh. And verse 19, verse 19 says, gives us what, what the works of the flesh are. Back in the King James now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, illumin illuminations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of which I tell you before, as I have told you before in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So that in the NIV, it says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immoralities, 
impurity and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousies, fits of rage, self, ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy and drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warned you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, that's In another place, uh, Paul says, and such were some of you, uh, but, but you have changed. You have, you have put on the new man. So, so that's what you have to do. We put, our, put the flesh down and not walk after the flesh. And but 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And NIV says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. There is no law written against these, these virtues. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with its affections and lusts. That's what I've been saying all along. Those that those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That's verse twenty-five. Now, I had it last week, and I'm going to repeat it this week. Romans chapter 8, verses 4 and 5. Romans chapter 8, verses 4 and 5. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the Spirit, do mind the things of the flesh. For those who are after the Spirit, though, I'm not reading it right. Read it again. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Okay, so there's something I want to I want to read from Smith. Well, Pastor Mike wrote a book. That says, "Transformed by Eating Royal Jelly." The metamorphosis of the human soul. And this is on page 62 and 63. And the heading is Imparting the Word. 
Jesus was sent from God to meet the world's need. Jesus lived to minister life by the words he spoke. He said to Philip, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. End quote. I am persuaded that if we are filled with his words of life and the Holy Ghost, and Christ is made manifest in our mortal flesh, then the Holy Ghost can really move among us with, with his life, his words, till as he was, so we are in the world. We are receiving our life from God, and it is always kept in tremendous activity, working in our whole nature as we live in perfect contact with God. <clears throat> Jesus spoke, and everything he said must come to pass. That is the great plan. When we are filled only with the Holy Spirit and and we want and we won't allow the words of God to be detracted by what we hear or by what we read, then comes the inspiration, then the life, then the activity, then the glory. Oh, to live in it. We live in it is to, to live in it is to move, be moved by it. To live in it is to be moved so that we will have God's life, God's personality in the, in the human body. That is Christ, Christ living in us. If we walk by the Spirit, we won't. We won't do the. Have the desires of the flesh. When we come to the place of impossibilities. It is the grandest place for us to see the per possibilities of God. Put this right in your mind and never forget it. You will never be of any importance to God till you venture in the impossible. God wants people on the daring line. I don't mean foolish daring. Quote, be filled with the Spirit, end quote. And when we are filled with the Spirit, we are not so much concerned about the secondary things. It is the first with God. Everything of evil, every unclean, everything satanic, in any way is an objectionable thing to God. And we are to live above it, destroy it, not to allow it to have any place. God didn't let the devil answer back. 
we must reach the place where we will not allow anything to interfere with the plan of God. That was written by Smith Wigglesworth. Now, so let's go back to Galatians again. Galatians 5, 5, 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. When we have Okay, walk in the Spirit. Yeah. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And then verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So if we're in the Spirit, if we allow the Holy Spirit to indwell us, then as long as we're walking in the Spirit, as long as we're living in the Spirit, we wouldn't be doing the uh, sinful things. We can be, we can live above sin. But some people, some people think that they, they can't, they can't live without sin. But we walk in the Spirit. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So that's that's first John. Okay, first John chapter I think it's chapter one. Yeah, verse seven. And if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. But then people get mixed up with, with the next verse. Because it says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we say our, we, we have no sin, if we say that um, well, okay, verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So if we, if we take verse, verse 8 and verse 10, You know, if we, if we say before, before we come to Christ, uh, some people boast, well, I'm not a sinner. 
and I don't I don't sin or I haven't sinned. But then if we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, so we, we need to come to a place where we ask God to, to forgive us and Jesus Christ to wash our sins away and then and then walk in the Spirit. If we walk in the Spirit, then we will not. We will not sin. We will not have the desire to sin. But if, but if we do sin, then we have an advocate with the Father to to bring us back into fellowship. But the, but the desire, the di desire should no longer be there. So, all right, let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, as we come before you, we give you thanks for another day you've given us. We just pray that your word would go forth and accomplish what you what you desire it to. So be with us now, guide and direct. If there's anyone out there that does not know you, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would speak through their hearts, cause them to see their need, and to ask the Holy Spirit to, to move in their lives so that they can walk, walk in the Spirit. So guide and direct us all till we meet again. We ask it all in Jesus' name, amen.